Hello and welcome. Uh, yeah, so welcome back to the uh, the Church of Mark podcast, and we have a special guest, uh, Lancelot Knight, with us today. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Uh, and we saw you play, it was literally a week ago today, right? It was last Friday that we saw you play at T.O. Lounge, uh, and you blew us away with your songs and your voice, uh, and j- just your amazing sort of uh, charisma and your stage uh, persona. Um, and you're originally from Saskatoon, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, from Great. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Great. I was grew up in Muscadet, First Nation. Great. Um, and um, so, what do you? What brings you uh, to Toronto? Um, I don't know. I've been in Saskatoon for so long, and like it's it's kind of really gotten stagnant. You know, there's no, like there's not enough work out there, and and the all the bars and stuff to get enough entertainment live entertainment from artists just from doing open mics and you know and they bring acts out of town and then when I put on a show no one really shows up so I right. figured you know, I was just go somewhere else for a little while so I spent two months in Vancouver to see if I wanted to move there and it was like a really tough city to get into it's really clicky out there it's like mm. everyone's, everyone's kind of doing their own thing right. but I've noticed though if you do get some people there who like you they will support you a lot yeah, and I, it wasn't until at the end of the two months. Then I started finally like <laughs> meeting people and then going into places and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, right. And then how long have you been here in Toronto, uh, checking out the scene? Two weeks now. Two weeks. Okay. Yeah, I got right. here on. I don't know, maybe two. Yeah, about, no, yeah, about two weeks. Yeah, I got here on the fifth of November. Okay. And then did an open mic, a couple of words, and then they offered me a show. So. Oh, great. And what uh, has your experience been like so far in the Toronto music scene, say, versus the uh, the Vancouver music scene? Um, everybody here is, like, really welcoming. Like, everybody's super nice. Like, they're just, they're, like, they, like, they'll tell you everything you need to know, and they'll be like, hey, we'll go here, check this out. If you want to go here, this is, like, the good place to go. And um, they're all, like, just fantastic and warm mm-hmm. and, like, really really good people but then I am a big guy so I could sure. be different like, could be different that's right <laughs> so what else <laughs> well I found that as well like we've lived in the city now here for how long like 25 26 years uh, and I noticed the same thing when uh, I had first moved to Toronto that uh, mu- music community was very welcoming mm-hmm. uh, they uh, you know would uh, tell you what was going on you know where the uh, best open mics were and what uh, venues to avoid uh, and some people to avoid, of course. Um, so what uh, places have you checked out here in Toronto? I know we saw you play at the T.O. Lounge, and you've played other venues here? Or Yeah, um, I played, I checked out the Handlebar, the Bar Cathedral. It's a really cool, cool place. I like that. It's a nice layout. It's old church, eh? You know, so I felt a little weird walking. It was a little hot in there, right? A little hot, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then... Um, Opera House I went to oh and then um, I got to see the Align Winter and Garden Theater I went to oh, see okay. Jeff uh, Jeff Monkman oh great or Kent Monkman right his um, his character um, Mischief Testicles did oh, okay. a little reading right. of his book of their book and, of their book and, um, and did a, just a talk back but that's a beautiful theater holy smokes absolutely yeah very cool. Yeah, and that's that's one on Young Street uh, near uh, Queen, I guess. Young I Queen. think so. That's right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I couldn't tell you. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, um, so tell us, how did you get started in music? I know your father is Chester Knight, of course, yeah. uh, the award-winning musician, and he's put out records and toured. Uh, and is that where you got inspired to do music? Uh, was it in the family or somewhere else? Um. Well, music has always been in the family, and I never really had any interest in it at all. I okay. Didn't want it, like, because you know, my dad was always jamming downstairs, and, you know, I'm trying to play with my Super Nintendo, like, or N64, <laughs> like, jeez, man, come on, can't, can't hear you. <laughs> yeah. um, and he's always playing, and I, I, but I think that was the foundation that I that I got, like, subconsciously, you know, is, is like, you just, like, hearing music all the time, and... And then he he would always he'd often like show me music and he would go for drives me and then like and and he'd like play some Tom Waits, hmm. some Leonard Cohen and then he, then after the song he'd ask me so what do you 
what do you think of that line there when he said this? Like, oh, dude, what do you think he meant there? Like, how does that sound? And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, he's rubbing half the world against their thighs, you know? I'm like, I'm like, I don't know, man. It's probably like, you know, she just, she likes dancing or something. And he's like, well, it actually means it's a, it's a metaphor of saying, like, she, she gets around a lot. She sleeps with a lot of men and rub it out. And then, so, like, he would explain lyrics like that to right. me and stuff like that in the car. Right. And, um, and I, but I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, neat, dad, cool. <laughs> um, but then, so, I mean, I wanted to be an athlete, first of all. Oh, okay. First and foremost, you know, because. Um, and what's your sport? I wanted to play football. Okay. Mm-hmm. I used to play hockey, too. I used to play goalie in hockey. That's what I really wanted to play. And, and um, did a lot of athletics growing up. And, um, so I wanted to do that, but then, then like, started becoming blurred now the older you get, right? When I was younger, um, my hip started getting this dull pain in it mm. all the time. Okay. Was, so I felt like I just had to crack it. So I'd be... I'd be sitting there, like, you know, getting ready for volleyball or, like, getting ready, and I was, like, just yanking on my hip, like, and, and like, is this going to crack? So I'd keep playing. And finally, about, like, about six months, I went through that pain in my hip, man. And, like, and I was just, like, I finally went to my mom about six months later. Oh. <laughs> when Because this one started hurting, too, right? Okay. So they're both aching at the same time. And then, um... I went to my mom and said, man, my hip like, really hurts. And she's like, oh, okay. Well, how long has it been hurting? I was like, oh, about six months. And she's like, what the fuck's the matter with yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she threw me in the car and then we drove right to the hospital and then they x-rayed it. And I was like, at this point I was limping. Okay. And then the, um, he came, took x-rays, and then he came out with the photo. And like, what happens? Like, this is your hip and ball joint, right? And so it was slipping out like that. Oh, geez. It's called slipped epiphysis. Okay. It happens, it's like one every 1,500 people. Oh, certain really? age group, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so this one was like that, and the other one was like it was like halfway. So oh, okay. instead of like me doing one surgery, waiting, because it's such a long recovery process, um, they did them both. So they just boom, boom, put pins through there. And they said, I can't do athletics anymore. Oh, okay. So, I was bedridden for like four months. I couldn't get out of bed because I had to heal, and then I was on a wheelchair for like another four months. And I oh, jeez. Crushes for another year and a half. And oh, wow. After this, because cause you're big, you know, this is a nice way of saying you're a chubby little, little, right. <laughs> you're a little chubby kid. You, know, like, you, know, you, know, you have to lose weight, and you, have to, um, you can't do athletics. So, right. I, like, that crushed me as, like, as a child, right? Right. That's all I right. wanted to do. So I got like really depressed, like like at that age, and like extremely mm. extremely depressed. And I was like sitting, because you know when you're a kid, you know everything is so much more, like holds so much more weight, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Like, even like in kid time, man, geez, it's like six months, four months feels like a year and a half it in does. kid time, and then. So. Yeah, so I saw I saw you know like really, depressed, and I think like you know uh, mental illness runs in our family. Um, like bipolar disorder or something. Mm-hmm. And, and so I started hearing these, like I'd wake up in the middle of the night at like three, three in the morning and I just hear like these voices just screaming around and like mm-hmm. arguing, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'd be like, well, 14, 13, 14. It went on to, went on for maybe six years. Mm-hmm. And they would just be like violent screaming in my head. And I'd just sit in there in the bathroom and just like wait for them to stop. And then, you know, mm-hmm. and then at 18, my dad bought me a guitar. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then I was like, I fell in love with it, man. I mm. just, I didn't, I didn't know, like, I had no idea I wanted to do music, you know. This is something my dad did, and something right. my sister did too, right? And my cousin Lindsay, she's a rapper, like, it's in the family. Like, that's right, equal. Yeah, that's your equal. cousin, that's right, yeah, yeah. 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 And then all of a sudden, like, those, those, those voices were yelling, and they just turned into music that would just play. Like, mm. you know, I'd wake up, and I'd just, like, so it, it that changed like a chemical in my brain or something like that so so now it just instead it still goes on to this day like you know I'll wake mm-hmm. up or before I go to sleep I'll just hear like, like pretty much audible music you know mm. like around here yeah. right 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 yeah so that, that's that's how I got into music and I played okay. like six hours for a year oh wow every day every day when okay I first got the guitar yeah and do you remember the first song you ever wrote 
Yeah. And do you still play it? Uh, yeah, some no okay. people like it. Some like it's it's the first time I wrote. It was called it's it was like a blues song called Indian Princess. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then or no, yeah, it was that one. It was the first song ever. That's the first song I ever finished. Finished, and then after that, she cried. It was she cries about um, but Indian Princess is just like you know, you know, and, and like us crazy out there in the. <laughs> <laughs> you see how we joke around about relationships, you know? Right. You know, she doesn't hit you. She don't love you, you know? You know? So it's like that about the toxicity of, like, the relationships. Right, and, right, right. You know, us crazy that we go through. Because of what, the, you know, learn through. Right. You know, behaviors. Remember talk to us. Right, right, right. So, do you find what's what do you find yourself writing most about? Is it about relationships or things that happen in your life or things that you've experienced? Um, well, lately it's changed. You know, lately I've really started started to um, write about myself, mm. take it into what my experiences and how to articulate how I feel through music. Um, but before that, I was more just telling stories. You know making like writing like short stories through song about relationships and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But now but now in the past um oh, about three to four years of writing I've really started to put my myself on it's my music, which is scary, you know, it's a little nerve wracking and it's like you know, I'm gonna find out if I'm crazy or not, right? <laughs> but, um, you know <clears throat> yeah. Great. And so I guess, so what is it about music that excites you, that that you want to practice and uh, play your guitar, you know, six hours a day? Oh, man, like, like you, you make music too, right? I do, yeah. Like, you know it that. no longer excites me. <laughs> no. Well, actually, that's not true. Harder, that's Mark. not true. You're right, that's right. <laughs> no, just um, I think it's different when, you, when you've done it for 30 years. Mm. I mean, there is still that anticipation and the excitement, don't get me wrong, mm. uh, when you're recording a new song or are you about to play uh, an awesome show or a concert um, but I think now that I'm older it hits me differently I, I, um, I treat it more like a business oh. um, there's less I would say emotional connection to what I do now mm. whereas before uh, say uh, say my first batch of songs that I wrote I'd be very sort of um, protective of them, kind of like uh, a parent would with you know with their children, right? Like, so I, I talked to a lot of new artists, and a lot of new artists wouldn't even license their songs. Say, if Pepsi wanted to use it, mm. no, I don't. No, that's not for Pepsi. It's 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 a song about love and about my uh, or whatever the song's about, yeah. and they don't want to see it tarnished by say commercialism. But at the end of the day, you got to pay the bills, and if Pepsi wants to use my music, hey, I'll gladly let them. Well, yeah, dude. Uh, like, and, I, and I don't think that tarnishes the music, and I, I don't consider that selling out because at the end of the day, we want people to enjoy our music as well as mm. pay for the time and uh, effort we put into it. I would think. Uh, what do you think? And I love Pepsi, man. Like, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, we're looking a for dream. a Pepsi endorsement. It's a if dream you're listening, come Pepsi, true, yeah. you know. <laughs> you know, that's see that feeling. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, I, I, man, I'll, I'll sell out. Anything, man. I need, I need to pay the bills. I want, you know, I want to make sure my kids are okay. Right, know, right, right, right. You know? And um, if Pepsi wants that, that's just you know, like I don't understand that. People, like, sell it. When I was younger, yeah, you know, because sure. like everything had more weight to it. That's right. <laughs> but then different things gain weight, like that's right. financial security. Right? Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. Right. And um, and like you know, if that your that just means your music just reaches a wider audience you know that's right like just look at it like that if you want you know if you want to help exactly. people just you know, you know crack open a pepsi man. that's right that's right you want to help us crack open a pepsi <laughs> once they give us the uh, sponsorship deal of course so so like so say, say you it's more of a business thing for you like and um do you find that you know you've been doing it for 30 years so you're obviously a yeah. master at it by now. well i don't know i'm just i'm yeah. sure i think i'm just starting to figure it out <laughs> That's exciting. Me. I know. It's exciting. Exciting. <laughs> yeah, like, but do you find that? Do you find that like? Um, is it? Is it because you? It's what happens with me, which is, is like when you're writing, like you kind of like get caught in a in a space. You ever feel like that? Is it? It depends on I think what I'm doing at that particular time. Like sometimes songs just literally uh, come out of the air. Mm-hmm. Like you know, must know how that is. You're sitting with a guitar and. 
Within five minutes, you got a whole new song written. Yeah. It's effortless sometimes. And other times, it's a real struggle. You have, uh, maybe it's writer's block. I don't know how to describe it, but there's like no information. There's no ideas, no musical ideas. I'd pick up the guitar and I'd be strumming G and that's all I'm doing for the next half hour. I, I don't even go to D or C because I <laughs> don't have the motivation or the the will, the creative will to go there, right? So for me, I kind of have to be inspired or have to be in the mode, I guess, mm. to write music. Is that what you find for yourself too? Or are you still writing and practicing every day? Um, no, as much as I'd like to say I do, I don't. Like, right, I mean, right. it's kind of, it, you're, you're, you're right in that sense, you know, like if I see a really good show, I see someone who puts on a really like fucking good show, yeah. and I'm just sitting there. I'm just like wired after that. Like the first thing I want to do, if, when I if I know I see it, the first thing I want to do is go home and then start writing, start something, right? Because then, because then you get something from that artist, right? Right, right. You know, and and like you're like, oh, that was a really cool idea, and then you know maybe I could try work on that. That's that inspiration of like. But you're right though. Like there's, and I'll tell you, it, it's kind of like a bad thing, but. Uh, you know, I'm under, but I'm under like um, substances, or, you know, drinking, and you know, what I mean, mm -hmm. it, it helps me write. And mm. I fear what I'm like sober, sober, like you know, when I'm on my sober kick, you know, right, right, you know, I'll clean the liver or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I don't really write much, right? Because I think it's, I think it's like uh, that. Because writing is my outlet. I use it a lot. So there's songs that I'm not ready to release that I have. Right, right, so right. I'm still working through. Right. So the thing with that and. Um, so how long so when do you know when a song is ready to be released like when you've written a song how do you know when it's finished it just kind of starts making its way into my sets okay you know what I mean and, and like and it feels natural you know because I don't really write down right you know I, kinda, I always just like I'll just when I work on a song I'll be like oh that's cool I did. and it sticks it has to stick and, it, and the words will stick you know what I mean like right. I, I do I do write um, like poems you know, or like right. ideas like in book, but mm -hmm. but that always kind of feels forced when you write it, like lyrics down, then you try to put it to music, you know? Right, right. It's kind right. of you just feel it out, like, you know, like just go with it, the waves of it. Like, right. And you're, you're like, you're not, it's like, you know, like going out of air. That's why I don't like taking really a lot of compliments because it doesn't really feel like it's yours. You know what I mean? Sure. Because you're just kind of like navigating the waters of that song and what it needs and you're, right. and you're pushing through and you're finding it. And what you mentioned about well, writer's block, I don't, I, I don't really look at it like that. Okay. I look at it like when you have a song idea and you're struggling with it, or you, you feel like you have a block or you're not inspired. I, I look at it like it's a challenge. Um, you, like what what blocks is my confidence for myself if I can do the song justice, if I can find the right lyrics, find the right melody to, to this guitar you know gave me right right and then so it's not really, it's more of a challenge then it gets daunting it's like oh shit man like so i'm working on this song right now right <laughs> i've been on it for <clears throat> oh two years two years yeah man I okay got, I got, uh first half of it, i got like maybe four lines right <laughs> oh four okay after two years <laughs> yeah man, after okay. two, all right two, two years man some songs that i've they've, they've like you know, it's like in the past, like I remember, uh, this one song I have now, it's it's finally almost done, but I've had it for oh five years now. Five years. Yeah. Okay. And then like, because you know, like when you're when you're writing, right? Sure. You have a nice riff, and you want to find a way out of that riff, right? Yeah. Because I don't like to do four chord songs, you know. I like because there needs to be something interesting in it. Sure. Yeah. yeah right? Of course. Especially if you're just doing acoustic and like. So, you get, then you get lost, you get stuck in that, in that forward, and you get in a trance, and you get like caught. Like you, so you're just effectively, like you said, strumming the G chord. Right, right that's right, <laughs> that's right, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> but that's that's the best part about music for me, is when you find those those mm. ways out, or you find that thing right. that completes, and then, then you just get that, that, that electric, you know, and it just like it just hits you, and then it's just like, oh, holy shit, you know. That's what I love, like, that's what I love about creating music, and that's what, you know, keeps me excited. And how does this translate for you, say, to the studio? Say you've written these songs, you've spent two to five years crafting them. Uh, now, now it's time uh, to go in the studio to record them for release. How do you keep that energy and that enthusiasm when you're in the studio? Because as you know, in the studio, once that red light goes on, you know, there's a click track maybe, and you got headphones, everything kind of 
falls apart yeah. somewhat. Oh yeah, yeah. I hate the studio. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in one right now. I know. I hate. The studio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no it, it, it get, you're right. It, it, it's really daunting, and that's what my dad always told me. Mm -hmm. like, Man, you'll have a song, you'll write, and you'll finish, and it took you a long time. You know, because I learned from my dad. My dad takes a long time writing. Mm -hmm. He'll work on a song for about a year, two years. Like um, he'll have until he's finished. He's really meticulous with his lyrics. Right. He takes a long time, you know. And you know, he'll sit there. And that's where I kind of got my process. I'll sit there and just kind of play the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again, you right. know, to make sure it feels right and sits right in the body. Right. Because because when you're playing and you're singing, right, you're you're the instrument, right? Like. Right. Um, but the studio man, he says that he'll write a song. And he said, that's one of the hardest things to do is keep the soul in the song when you're in the studio because you'll write a song that you just love and when it gets finished, like the soul gets sucked from that song and it doesn't feel the right or sound right the same. Right. And um, he said that a lot of that is just from like not being prepared. Cause okay. Because he says you're going to record, especially if you're on like a time where mine's involved, you should actually play that song a hundred times before you go into the studio and record it. That way you were not wasting anybody's time, nor money. Right. You know? That's really good it. advice, actually, yeah. yeah. And, and then, so, I don't do that. Right, okay, <laughs> all right, all right. I do the exact opposite of that. <laughs> but it is good advice, you know, but there's songs like that that I have, but you know, when I'm writing them, I end up playing them 100 times anyways. Right, right, right. right. Um, so I guess I do do that, but I don't sit that. Sure. But I'll, I'll see him do that before he goes and records. Right, right, right. You know, he'll set it aside, you know, a half hour, and he'll just play that song maybe five or six times. Right. Back. So you know it inside and out, like the back mm -hmm. of your hand, as yeah. they say. That's right. And it's really cool to watch him do it, you know. Then, and then, so, but the studio is, I am not comfortable in the studio because I, I don't get to record how I want to record. Okay. You know, but I, just recently in Vancouver, I was working with um, Tanner Coyne. I met him just randomly. Hmm. And he's like, we're like best buddies. Okay. Like, you know, you know, like when you make me like, you're, you're like your soulmate. You know, sure, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like, oh man, this is like, it's like something I really connect with. And he had, a, he had a studio in his garage. And he said, man, you can smoke in here, you can drink, you know, just record, you know, and like, and then he's, it gave me freedom to like be who I am when I need to mm. create, right? Right, right. You know, because a lot of the studios, like, if you look at videos back in the day, like from the like, older, like 80s, 70s, 80s, those artists are in there, they just get to be who they want, man. They come in with drinks, they come and they get to smoke cigarettes for smoking right. weed, you know, and like, sure, yeah, yeah. It's, the producers there, they're having fun and they're right. working at it. But now, a lot of times, like, when you go to the studios, they're so corporate. You know, even, even if it's like someone's home studio, like right, 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 right. Like it's not like everyone takes it so fucking serious, right? You know, and that's like it sucks the fun out of it. Mm. Of the reason why it's like I do theater too. I do acting, right? Like, right. Yeah. You know, um, and they want to work ten to four, like nine. Fuck, I got to do music, so I don't have to wake up and do a nine to five. Like, that's right, <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 Why, why are we doing this you know that's right but and I've, I think about that stuff and I'm, but I guess it's just bring um, validity to the arts right Cause, right 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 because they want to oh well look we're working here <laughs> like you know sure right right you know, as opposed to starting at like you know noon or one and going to like in eight or nine in the evening right you know? right 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 which would be preferable you know because my mind doesn't really start getting going to like two or three sometimes even five <laughs> okay well that's why a lot of uh, creative people are they don't get going until later in the day mm. late after afternoon is when their creative juices start uh getting kicked in i guess yeah like in, you know when you first wake up it's like the, you know don't talk for half an hour like i am i'm fucking useless and like, right 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know i think like, most people are <laughs> just like, I'm just, uh, <laughs> you know but i'm not like when i don't have my coffee you know i'm not one of those like right right right, right. But it's just you know 
that, that unless I had to play shows like that, those festivals, right? Where they get you to play like eleven and like ten. Oh man, I know. Shit should be illegal. That's <laughs> <laughs> it's too early. Yeah, it, it really is. It, and then who's listening to music at ten in the morning? Mm. I, I mean, there are people out there, but you know, to go see a live show. Uh, yeah, to wake yeah, up yeah, and go watch right, a live yeah. show at ten in the morning. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 that's just ridiculous. Well, yeah. you know, some people do. I guess. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, they, people do show up, right? They do. They do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Weirdos, right? <laughs> That's right. You've seen this thing. We gave morning people too much power in this world, man. That's right. Exactly. That's right. We got to take back, take yeah. back the power, take back, take the, back night. the night. Yeah, exactly. That's right. I do get up early in the morning. That's right. Actually, mm-hmm. I go to bed by nine usually, unless I got a show. Then I got to stay up and do the show. <laughs> <laughs> And you're just mad. I'm like, just mad. I'm just oh yeah, cursing on stage. Be in bed right now. <laughs> That's right. I tell the audience that I'd be in bed if it wasn't for you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, what's your next yeah. show coming? Uh, what is it in January in Ottawa with the Sultans of String? The uh, it's uh, Center Point Theater, I think it is, and cool. then uh, Kingston at the Grand Theater, and then um, River Run Center Guelph. Uh, anyways, there's a uh, there's, hey, there's a list somewhere. <laughs> Really, that's that's awesome. That's rad. Are you, um, you playing any in town? I could come watch. Uh, you know, what? we're trying to do a Toronto show. You know, I rarely actually play in Toronto. We've been talking about that. Um, I don't know why. I don't have anything against Toronto. I mean, I live here, but uh, but I noticed Toronto. There's a lot of competition. So at any given weekend or night of the week, there's always like something going on. There's like a Leafs game, or there's a festival downtown, or someone's playing the Budweiser stage, or. Uh, I don't know, Joe Blow's doing a comedy thing at the whatever center. Or like, there's always stuff going on. Mm. Um, I mean, which is fine. It's a big city. Uh, but yeah, at some point, we will do a show in the future That's here. Cool. We haven't done one since... Uh, I'm looking at Laura because she knows the numbers. Since with Ace and Abby, uh, Ace and Abby sorry, at the... Uh, Basement two five four. Ace and Abby. Yeah, hey, I've I've heard of him. I've been like this guy's kind of came on radar recently. Holy shit! Oh, eh? he's awesome. Yeah, yeah. He he's is, great. Man. He's yeah. been on this show as well. So oh, there wow. you go. You're in good company. That was cool. Yeah, 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 I've been listening to um, um, some of the stuff. You know. Yeah, like, yeah. He's like, wicked. And also uh, from Thunder Bay. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. You guys are just cranking them out there. Yeah? Just cranking them out. We're just cranking out <laughs> the artists. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of sad there yeah I can see why well, people want to get out of Thunder <laughs> yeah, Bay like, so that's out, why it's yeah. like I, I gotta find a way to get out of here I'm either gonna go to Hollywood or be in the music business <laughs> uh, so yeah. speaking of Hollywood you did, you did mention you did theater yeah that you do acting as well and you had a show a play at the National Arts Center uh, Reasonable Doubts is that correct uh, or, or something that you were oh, involved in was it Persephone Theater yeah. okay was, right uh, okay yeah, yes yeah. Persephone Theater um, I got the uh, Created um, a play with Joel Birnbaum and Yvette Nolan. Okay, it's a verbatim piece. It's a, it started off because um, well, you being from Thunder Bay, yes, like you know how bad it is in those mm-hmm. towns like that. You mm-hmm. know, yeah, Saskatoon is like the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's weird being out here in Toronto, like being treated like a person. You know, <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> like you know, like getting the benefit of the doubt. Like you know, like. Them handing you your cigarettes when you buy them after you tap, you know, as opposed to holding them like this. Like, That's right. You, right? Like That's it's, right. It's really nice. And it's, but then it's sad because then you're like, oh, well, shit, man. That's like, that's not a way to be treated, right? That's right. Um, but so we started the play uh, about the, the relationship between the native and the majority right. in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. And so the process of a, verb- a verbatim show is uh, Joel Birnbaum, he would go interview people. So, like, what do you think of the native population in, in Saskatoon? What, what do you think of this? And people are like, oh, you know, natives are pretty good, like, giving their canned answers, right? Right. Like, the, the good answers, the right sure, words. Sure, right, right. And then so, then Colton Bushy got shot by Gerald Stanley there on this farm. Right. And then he went out and started interviewing people again. That caused, like, a major rift. But it also opened up a lot of doors and opened up a lot of windows that to look, people need to even just be able to look through. Right, right. Right. And kicked open some doors where people get to be able to like walk mm-hmm. in and see what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so then he went out again and started asking questions to white people. And you know, I mean, the majority. I, I, I got to stop saying white people. Like, you know, sure. I, get, it's, I keep. 
you know, that's one thing I'm trying to like to say the majority as opposed to sure. singling out. Like you say, yeah. Caucasian people are. Yeah, but it's not say, just uh, Caucasian okay, people. Okay, that's true. Right? Okay, yeah, okay. Right. Yeah, non indigenous. indigenous. There we hey, go. There we go. Oh, there. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. That's why she's the producer of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Soups in and saves us. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the non indigenous, right? Right. Because um, it is really bad out there. I mean, even like for me, uh, the, I don't really catch the cabs. I see the Uber because the last. Out of the past 15 cab rides I've been in, um, I've been, in, uh, got to take to the police station about seven of those. Oh, jeez. Yeah. The ratio is getting better the more cabs I take. But okay, <laughs> all, right. all right. It was like one for one for <laughs> the beginning, right? Okay. Um, because they'll, they'll ask you, you know, and they'll be like, okay, well, uh, can you have, how are you going to pay? I'm like, I don't know, high fives, dude. What do, you, what do you mean? What kind of question is that? You know, I'm like, you know, money. Can you show me your money before we leave? I'm like, no, I'm not going to show you my cash. And he's like, okay, well, can I charge $10 on your debit card before we go anywhere? And I was like, no, this is not how it works. Right. He's like, well, I'm not going anywhere then. And I was like, no, this is a service. You're being discriminatory. And he's like, then we, just get, then we get in an argument, same way. And he's like, well, I'll call the cops. And I'm like, what are you going to call the cops for? Not doing your job correctly? Are you discriminating against me? Oh, I'll take you to the police station because they know that that's how bad the police are in Sassoon's Sketchman. That is a threat. That is a fucking real threat to Native people. I will take you to the police station. Wow. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I end up at the police station. I'm like, fuck it, go ahead, take me on. I'm not doing anything wrong. He's like, you won't get on my cab. Well, you won't provide me a service. You know? And then the cops will go in their windows like, hey, uh, can we just get out of the cab, man? Like, I'm like, dude, that's not right. Hey, it happens to me all the time, man. The cab, the cab drivers, they ask me for money. They, ask, they charge. Like, I'm like, no, they fucking don't, man. You guys right, are like, right. enabling yeah, this yeah. behavior. Like, it's, yeah. So I was like, no, no. Cause, but they can't do anything to me. I don't get arrested because they know they're in the wrong. You know, he's in the wrong. But they're all working together mm. to get me away from that service. Right, right, right. Right? Because they understand the cab. That's right, right, right. And they right. don't understand me. No, no, yeah. So we did the verbatim play, and uh, Joel interviewed all these people, and they, they're on, their answers become really honest, which was tough to work on that, because the process was Joel would bring me an interview, a bunch of interviews, because an interview about, he'd interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people, and then he would bring back, like, all 40 people said this. So they will take the one interview that articulates it the best way that these, and then they'll bring me that interview, and then I won't be able to listen to their voices, and I just read the words on the paper and I write a song about what they said. Okay. And then they would, then Yvette Nolan, the dramaturg, she's a genius, and then her and Yvette, they they worked to braid the music and the interviews into a story, you know. So it came out. It sold out the Persephone Theater, which was nice. The governor general came the first day. And, oh, awesome. And he didn't get anyone to play God Save the Queen, which is kind of... Okay. <laughs> which I kind of really wish he did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I really, like, I was, I was disappointed. Okay. You know, because the governor general, like, every time I've done shows where he's been there, <clears throat> I've been a part of, like, they always play God Save the Queen when he's walks right, in the right, room. Right. And this time he went and hid in the green room, and he came out and he said, please don't play God Save the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, and, uh, at the time, um, Ryan Miley was there when he was... In the mayor, so a lot of people came, and the guy who actually headed Colton Bushy's uh, case, the RCB officer, he came that night. Oh, okay. So there was a lot of people there, and um, yeah, it was. It's out on Amazon, and if you order online, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <you don't> <laughs> <laughs> the book, if you're interested, it's it's a real it's a it's a really good look. It's a real look into okay how. You, Thunder Bay is and like right. places like you know Manitoba, Alberta, Saskatchewan. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Yeah, so that, and, um, but yeah, so it's a lot. And it's got turned into a, it's being taught in some universities and it's being taught. Uh, okay, like, and like they're putting a pilot program together to so go to public schools. Okay, great, yeah. Yeah. excellent. Uh, so we're coming up towards the end of the show and uh, just have a couple of questions left. And you're going to do a song at the end. Um, and I always ask guests this. What uh, advice do you give to any, say, uh, you know, uh, you know, young indigenous artists out there? Or they don't have to be indigenous. They can be anyone. Uh, you know, at home watching this and they want to get into the music business or maybe get in the theater. What's your best advice to them? Um. 
don't listen to me. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say the best advice is, man, just put yourself out there and don't be too cool. Be nice. Don't get ahead of yourself. Thank the sound men that shows because those guys will make or break you and those guys are there too, you know. Because um, that's what my dad always told me. You know? Right. Oh, and the only time my dad tells me this, which I do, um, is when you go play a show, you want to dress and act a cut above the rest. You want right. to be a character. You want to be that. But then as soon as you're done, pff, let that leave that on stage. Right. You know? And then and he says, don't dwell on the compliments. So he says, when someone comes up to you after a show and shakes your hand and says, thank you, that was a really amazing show. Just breathe in that moment, say thank you, and let it go, and carry on. Because mm. then you're going to get stuck in that egotistical mindset, right? That's right, right, right. Yeah. And uh, Oh, and don't talk about anything until check is in hand or contract is signed. Because you're going to meet a lot of people who are going to just talk and talk and talk and talk your ear off. And um, always follow up. Right. Mm. Well, that's great. That's great, solid advice. Perfect. Uh, and maybe, uh, do you want to let us uh, know about the song that you're going to play? Maybe set that up... Uh yeah, I should have thought about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I used to, uh, yeah, the song I'm going to play is called um, Gold Moon, I guess. And I'll be releasing it later this year. Mine, um, or should I do the one I released recently? I don't know. Yeah, I'll do Gold Moon. Okay, yeah. and it's coming out on a new EP or LP this uh, year? Or? Hopefully one of the two. Okay. Uh, within, probably within six months. Or six okay. Months. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of funny because I just realized that because my dad's got a song "Sail on Silver Moon." Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and that's my favorite song. And then I was like, I was like, oh, Gold Moon, that's cool. Like, it, it was until like two months ago. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> it happens. Yeah, right. you guys have the same DNA. <laughs> exactly. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. All right, we're gonna do a quick switch over, and we're gonna hear the song by Lancelot Knight. This is Gold Moon. And I took in your light and I put it where my blood pumps. And at a single sight, your love would fill my skin with bumps. Often I'm lost in the angles of you But see it's hard when you're scarred To feel any kind of truth But I will be the sun that follows you My moon, I want to warm you but Let me be the sky that cradles you at night I want to She would talk, her lips would dance to an unheard song. And often I picture our time together to last through it all. And I'm sifting through the words that came from your heart. And I still feel the warmth from your beautiful spark. But I will be the sun that follows you to my moon. I want to warm you. But let me be the sky that cradles you at night. I want to I miss when we dance when we were alone And your body felt like home Cause I will be the sun that follows you my moon I wanna warn you Let me be the sky that cradles you at night I wanna
Awesome. Thanks so much. And how can people find you online? Um, Lancelot Knight. Or Lancelot I Knight on Instagram. Um, my name, Lancelot Knight. You don't know, search it up and find it there. I'm everywhere. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks so much uh, for being on the show. And uh, please check out uh, Lancelot's music. It's on Spotify and everywhere else and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, really good, uh, so. We'll post the links uh, in the uh, comments below. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me.